What's up, everyone? It is your host, Ty Cole, here with Your Voice Media, and I'm so excited to talk to one of the stars of Naomi, Mr. Cranston Johnson. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Ty? I'm well. I have to say I am thoroughly enjoying the series. Great, great. For me, it's beautiful to see us in -hmm. this world. I think a lot of times, you know, we play very limited to minor roles, but to see us in these pivotal roles here is awesome. So I'm so my first question for you was this. So how does it feel to be a part of the DC universe? And also, like I said, see heroes and villain characters who look just like you. Well, first of all, being a part of the DC universe is a dream come true. Yeah. Um, I didn't grow up necessarily being a huge comic book fan, but I understood the significance of comics early on. And Mm -hmm. just, you know, they've been around for decades and so many people are just so, you know, such fanatics for them. Um, They have such huge fan bases. So to be a part of that world and to be be able to play a character like Zimbardo in the DC universe on 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 an up and coming show like Naomi with a character who was recently introduced um, to me, it's very inspirational, it's motivational, and um, I'm just excited about it. It's, it's actually surreal. Um, a lot of the times I still can't believe that, that it's actually happening. So uh, it's just a wonderful feeling. I and think we all feel that way. Yes, absolutely. And like you said, the representation, seeing people of color playing these superheroes, these supervillains, um, that's something that we don't get a lot of. So it's definitely refreshing to see more of it and actually be on the ground, putting the work in um, to play these characters. It's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. And your character is Zimbardo now, you know, I can't figure him out. <laughs> Good. So, <laughs> right. And maybe that's the point. He comes in and he's very subtle and then he kind of like does something and then he doesn't. For folks who are watching this, he gets a little bit more animated in episode two. But, you know, with Zambado already giving the audience a lot of intensity, slightly establishing himself as the bad guy, as we continue to unravel his story arc, let us know some of the qualities that he has and how he will play a major part within this season. Well, piggybacking off what you said, when we first see him, he's this mysterious character that we're trying to figure out, like, what, what is the deal with this guy? Is, yeah. is he creepy? Is he, is he going to harm her? Uh, we really don't know his motivation. And to me, um, that's very exciting playing a character that is an enigma. Uh, he's very unpredictable, uh, which I think is also very exciting for, for us, for me to play and for our audience to watch. And as the story continues to be told, as, as Naomi learns more about herself, we'll see um, more of the backstory and the origin story of Zimbardo and how they are linked. Um, without teasing too much, but it'll be an interesting journey that you will get to see um, that we'll go on and learn more about Zimbardo. I want to see more of Zimbardo. I think that we love Naomi, of course, you know, we are always Mm going to be on the superhero side, but there's something about him. And I'm just like, I need to know what's going on with him. Like, so my question for you is this as well. Are there some things that Zimbardo has that are some quality characteristics that you have And are there some characteristics that you have that also live in Zimbardo? Even in (laughs) supervillain. Absolutely. absolutely. Uh, Well, to the core of Zimbardo, what I think we have, or what I'm confident that we have is the, that he's highly motivated. So he has this, this passion, this drive to accomplish the goal that, that he's after. And I embody those same qualities, uh, before I got into acting, I, I played some sports in college and everything. And so oh, those, okay. those things have been instilled in me. I'm very passionate. Once I get focused on something, you know, I'm um, pedal to the metal. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and, you know, I'm going to work as hard as I can to get that goal accomplished. So that's, that's very similar uh, with Zimbardo. Uh, I don't have the wardrobe he has. I know. <laughs> listen, listen, his wardrobe and his outfits are, are something else. So he's just very stylish um, character, which I think plays yeah. along to the physicality of him. Um, mm-hmm. Because we see this calm, relaxed, kind of, you know, very controlled, maybe even suave um, yeah. kind of gentleman. And to me, I think that uh, I enjoy that element because I think that that plays into him almost having this mystique of even being more dangerous because he is so calm and kind of cool instead of being 
very animated and loud. Well, crisp and animated. Yes, absolutely. So, well, wait a minute now, because you're pretty suave, Mr. Cranston. Okay, you have a nice well, little uh, style going on here. Okay, with the nice sweater. Well, thank I'll you. I'll credit you out yet. <laughs> it's at, but listen, it's not 24 7 like Zimbardo, you know, okay. 365. Like he is it's dressed for the like interviews, the carpets, and absolutely. And the <laughs> like, the, like the man the man said, I'm out hiking, you know, in, in the woods, and this is the fit he had on. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. No, that kind of got me. I was like, wow, like, I don't, I wouldn't even hike in that. <laughs> I get my wardrobe up. Like, now, care. in your opinion, Cranston, in your opinion, what do you think makes a good villain and a good superhero? I'm sorry, Ty, I, I had a little bit of a disruption. Could you repeat that? Yeah, no problem. See, I'm telling you, the computers and technology, they're doing their own thing. Um, now, in your opinion, what makes a good villain and what makes a good superhero? For me, in my opinion, what makes a good supervillain is uh, just kind of piggybacking again off of what I said earlier, someone who's unpredictable, someone mm -hmm. who is mysterious and enigma, someone that we cannot put into a box that we don't know really what what this person, you know, this 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 male or this female, what they really are about. So I think having um, having those qualities, I think also having a fine line of aggression and intensity with vulnerability. Mm -hmm. I think if you can have those worlds kind of mesh and blend, I think that that makes an amazing supervillain. Because at the end of the day. Yeah. I approach this person as I don't want to be judgmental of this person that I'm playing. The world may perceive him as bad or he may actually be bad. But a lot of the times when we when we find people in real life who have these qualities, maybe they have backstories that have led them down this road and, and maybe they're actually victims. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, I like to play it from from that personality first and build him up from that way. Um, as far as a superhero, the things that make a an excellent superhero to me is someone that's this likable, someone that's uh, that's someone that's there to represent everyone, no matter you know what their sexual orientation is, what their what their what their beliefs are, what their what their nationality is. They're yeah. there for the people, and you know they're there to help the people. You know whether it's fight off a bad guy or just give them motivation and uplift their spirits um, to give them hope. I love that. Now, because we kind of see, I don't want to give too much away for those who are watching this, but we do kind of see a little bit of Zimbardo's power. Mm -hmm. Now, if you could have a superpower, Cranston, what mm -hmm. would your superpower be? Oh, that's easy. Teleportation. Like, okay. I would love to be able to teleport. Like, like right now, you know, I'm in Atlanta and it's 30, 40 degrees. I would love to just teleport to South Beach or somewhere or, you know. Okay. Just and just come back and, you know, just go there for the day and don't have to get on a plane or any of that. I think that'd be cool to teleport around the world. Just pop in and out. And that's yeah, absolutely. Because a lot of people would say flying, but, you know, I mean, who wants to fly when you can just teleport, you know? Set, exactly. Save yourself the stress. <laughs> save myself the stress. Plus, I hate yeah. hate. So I feel like I would never fully use my power. <laughs> if I was flying. <laughs> now, although a slow build, things will continue to heat up and pick up fast on the show as we continue to unravel the truth about Naomi's background. What do you think it will be about the main character that will have fans fall in love and connect with her? Well, well, number one, I think the fans will fall in love with Naomi because there's this quality that Casey has that it's so genuine, it's so warm. Yeah. It's so likable. Lovable. And me, it right. And to me, it translates on the screen because that's who she is as an individual in her personal life. And to me, that when I first saw the pilot several months ago, we were we were able to kind of be gifted that through the producers and stuff when we yeah. first started shooting. It was just instantly she I was gravitating to watching her and wanted to see more of her. That smile, that that energy all of that. And, and I think that she's just a positive, positive individual that, you know, we're going to want to fight for her. We're going to want to learn her story and we're going to be in her corner. And um, so I think that that's, that's what they'll take away from her. That's what they'll like about her. I love that. Now we did get to see Superman the first episode. Okay. Everyone mm -hmm. was like, oh my God, he's here. Now let's say Superman knocked on your doorstep, right? If you can meet Superman, 
what would be the first question you would ask him? Oh my goodness. Great question. <laughs> Great question. If I could meet Superman, what would be the first question that I would ask him? Uh, I don't know. I guess I would like to know more about the kryptonite. Why that actually is something that, you know, he's susceptible to. Now, mm -hmm. the comic book, the comic book, uh, the people who are really into that world may already know that question. But for me growing up, I, Superman was always iconic. And, you know, you would always hear Superman, but then you would hear kryptonite. Exactly. And to me, I never really have done the research and was ed educated enough on kind of knowing that. So I guess that would be part, part of the, the question, you know. Okay. <laughs> I think my question to him would be, do you get tired of beating behind all day? <laughs> like, do you ever just want to like take the day off? Like, do you that's gotta ever be an day? exhausting job, right? Gotta that's an exhausting it. job. And I wonder, <laughs> I think another one probably like, do you get paid for this? <laughs> like, are you getting paid? Is the cops putting you on payroll? Like, what's going on here? Um, yeah, that's a great but, question. <laughs> now, your character currently works in disguise at the car dealership. Now, before you became a full fledged actor, mm -hmm. What was your what was your final job you had? The final job that I had was I worked in mental health for about uh, 12, 13 years. So the final job that I held was I worked at a uh, crisis hospital in Greensboro, North Carolina. And uh, so we worked with different patients who were who were going through um, through mental health crisis. It was a short term stay for us until we could get them transitioned out to, to longer term care or to get them, you know, stabilized to get back to their normal routine. But uh, that's what I did. Uh, like I said, I did that for about 12 or 13 years in different capacity. Uh, was working at the hospital for about two years prior to uh, getting my big break on a show called Happen Leonard. I became a series regular on that and, and haven't looked back since then. So I've been very fortunate and blessed to do what I do, make art and, and live this dream for a living. So I'm thankful. You're doing a great job. I love Thank this. Thank you so much, Ty. You're doing awesome. Now, are there any other characters from the DC universe that we can possibly expect to pop in the episodes? Um, will there be any potential crossovers? Because I know that the CW, they kind of like to do that a lot. So can we expect that in this series? Yes, from my understanding, um, there may be a little thing sprinkled in there, but again, I don't want to spoil too much, but I, I okay. am I am confident that Ava is focused on the Naomi story at this time and the crossover stuff, if it's meant to be, will happen a little bit later on, but we want you to get to get you immersed in the Naomi story right now. But there may be a little surprises uh, okay. throughout these next 12 episodes, so make sure you stay tuned. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'd love to hear surprises. Uh -huh. Now, you seem like a very private person. Like you have no social media at all, like mm -hmm. at all, because I was doing my research and I was like, hold on, <laughs> wait a minute, where is he? Now, what's the reason for that? Because as you know, in today's time, a lot of things, you know, people were getting booked, people are staying in the know because of social media. Social media has been become like a new, um, I would say resume for yes. people. So for yourself, why no social media? Like what was the reason for that? So I had social media up until about maybe two years ago. Um, and I was, I was heavily immersed in it. Uh, you know, I had, I had the Twitter, I had the Instagram, I had the Facebook and all of those things. And sometimes it would get a little bit mentally exhausting for me, just the, the upkeep of it, the, the self-promotion, which makes me uncomfortable at times. Um, uh, and just, just some other reasons, but I decided to take a little cleanse because I would always, whenever things would feel like it's getting a little overwhelming, I would say, let's take two weeks off, let's take a month off and come back, refresh, recharge the batteries. And you know what? I took I took 30 days off and it turned into two years. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, no. um, and listen, listen, Ty, I totally understand the wonderful benefits that can be awarded to people in the entertainment industry. Uh, uh, through these through these platforms, it's it's an amazing way to get your art out there, to get your brand out there to anyone across the planet within seconds. Um, so it was kind of it was kind of um, scary when I first did it because I was wondering like, is this going to hurt my career? Because 
you know, having conversations with some people, they were adamant about you, you need to be on, you need to be uh, plugging away at the brand, you need to be building your fan base and all of that stuff. And, and you know, and I considered that and it's, it's, it's interesting when I got off, I felt like my career kind of burgeoned and, and I was working more than ever. Uh, I wasn't in my head so much about comparing my journey to other people because that was a big issue for me. I would yeah. sit and look at these other, other, other talented actors and stuff. And it, and it wasn't a jealousy thing, but it's just that sometimes we get these insecurities about, yeah, like, hey, they're working. Um, I haven't been working for a while. I'm kind of, and then you start feeling a little down about yourself. So I just wanted to try to take myself down an avenue that was a little bit different to see how it will work. And, and like I said, I got off and, and, and it's been working and, and um, you know, but, you know, I'm not going to say that I won't get back on in the future, but right now this is what's working for me and, and, and I'm comfortable with it. And also uh, I like kind of being an enigma in real life because, mm-hmm. you know, if people see every single detail about me, they may not believe me as Zimbardo because I'm a silly guy, Ty. My, yeah, my friends tell. and family will tell you I am silly <laughs> as, you know, we can laugh all day and cut up and, and be a fool. So they may say, hey, I've seen Cranston on that. And, and, you know, I don't really believe in this embodied, this serious guy. I'm not buying that. So mm, they're kind of pigeonholed you because they feel like your real self is not. And you know what? I have to agree with that because there, um, there's a popular character, Mr. I think it's Michael Rainey Jr., who yeah, you know, he plays power Three. and yes. while he you know i've seen him out and about at a couple of events before he's really calm and and, mm-hmm. and silly and fun mm-hmm. and on social media you know people come in because he's tyreek mm-hmm. and people tend to not you know separate the real right. person from right. the character so i totally understand for you you don't want that to kind of happen because then they yeah. pigeonhole your limit you to what you can absolutely do. and i think that that's a gift and a curse because obviously if people see you out somewhere and they can't separate you from Tariq or zimbardo that means you're doing an amazing job with your character uh exactly. but, but like you said i just want to kind of keep people guessing about who the real me is so you know i can tackle these characters and and and, and bring it off this authenticity to them in the realism that you know you don't have any other preconceived notions about who i am or what i'm about well you know what you're doing a great job so, thank you. Thank I you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm believing it. Okay. Thank you. Now, thank you, Black people won Golden Globes this year. Like Will mm-hmm. Smith. I mean, MJ Rodriguez. And that was like a first, the first trans woman to win a Golden Globe. Mm-hmm. Now, some people's ultimate goals as an actor is awards. What's your ultimate goal as an actor? My ultimate goal as an actor is to... It's to inspire, number one, um, to do work that that is inspiring to maybe that one person that may may see this that's been struggling um, with, you know, maybe it's getting into acting, maybe it's starting their own business, maybe it's, you know, taking a trip around the world, something like that, to, to inspire people to, to, to go after something and to not sit back and to wait because I got into acting pretty late, late in life. You know, I didn't study it in high school. I didn't study it in college. I kind of, it kind of happened accidentally for me. And, you know, my journey is, 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 is very different than a lot of actors. So I think that that can be provide inspiration to people um, to see like, there's like, like we say, it's never too late to do anything. And that's the mm-hmm. absolute truth, especially in acting because, you know, we have fathers, we have grandfathers, we have great grandfathers, we have, yeah. you know, superheroes, villains, witches. Right. right. It's such Don't a talk people your age people, and people who look like you can play a teenager. You'd be surprised. Thank you. So it's, it's such a wide range of what you can do. So I really feel good when I hear from people and, and they tell me that they're inspired and they and they want to try some things. And, and and another goal is just to to put work out there that that's not novelty that you know if you watch it 20 years from now it'll have the same effect it'll still be telling these great stories like what Naomi's telling um so that that's my goal to be to be attached to projects like that and to work with people like Ava DuVernay I love that now fun question for you before we Uh like wrap up here okay the Oscars are coming back 
And this mm -hmm. time they have a host. This is the first time we've had a host since 2018. Now okay. everyone is throwing in people's names in the bidding. You know, we got people saying they want Steve Carell. We got people saying they want um, just so many people. You know what I mean? Tom Holland, mm -hmm. Pete Davidson is another mm -hmm. name that was out there. So, you know, for you, you know, if you could choose. Uh -huh. Is there anyone you would like to see hosts come March? Like if the if the ball was in Cranston's corner, like you know what, Cranston, you have the final say. Of who's hosting? You, you know what? I, I think that uh, I'm a huge Jamie Fox fan, Ooh, so I think okay. that uh, Jamie Fox hosting will be great. I mean, he's got the comedic element. He's got the dramatic element. He's a former Oscar winner. I think that you know. He's just so relatable to me, uh, and, and and I just enjoy, I enjoy all his work. I'm very inspired by it. So I think that uh, him hosting, just off of, off the top of my head, I think that that's someone that I would, would love to see host. But whoever whoever gets the gig, I'm sure it's going to be great, and uh, we'll be tuned in. Well, I'm going to be tuned in. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw your name in the hat. Let's get you <laughs> hosting, okay? I feel like you'd be a great host as well. I can tell. I can already Thanks tell. Thanks now... Last question, tell us why we need to watch Naomi for those who are watching and what can fans expect for the rest of the season? Well, number one, you should be watching Naomi because we are going to push the envelope online on what it is to, to change a process, a thought process. Uh, the tagline mm -hmm. of the show is don't believe everything you think. Don't believe everything you think, excuse me. And to me, that's such a powerful statement because we are conditioned to have all of these um, certain beliefs. We, we hear things since, since small ages, since young ages, and we take these things as factual. Not saying that some of them aren't, but we're challenging people to be curious, to ask more questions, to not be comfortable with you know, the, the information that someone is gonna give you. Do your own research. Um, and you know, that's what you're seeing right now with Naomi as it's starting to manifest at the end of the episode when she asks, who am I? She's gonna go down this track to where she's gonna begin asking these questions, these difficult questions, these hard questions, not only to herself, but to the people that she's asking them of. And I think as a society, that's, that's imperative that we just don't let people force feed us information. We live in a world right now where there's a ton of misinformation out there and you have to be diligent in, in what you digest and, and where you're getting your information from. So we're challenging, we're challenging people to not believe everything that you think. Um, so, so that in itself, I think is a, is a great reason to tune into our show, to see how the storyline will weave and, 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 and work around that, that, that concept. Um, because when I first heard it, I was, I, I kind of live by that mentality a little bit now, but it was something that really dawned on me. I was like, this is spot on. This is, yeah. this is how we need to be thinking in 2022 moving forward. Uh, you know, just, just challenge yourself. Be curious. Be curious. Yes. I love that. Cranston, it was amazing chatting with you today. You Absolutely. are such a phenomenal actor. And I really cannot wait for folks to really dive into Naomi. So for those who are watching, make sure you're catching Cranston every week on the CW on Tuesdays to watch him and Naomi, okay? You're amazing. Keep doing your thing. Stay off social media, I guess, because it, it does get crazy. <laughs> I, I wish I can do the same thing. <laughs> okay maybe one day when i'm a little more bigger i can get off of that but keep doing your thing okay cranston i'm so proud thank you ty and i'm um, so appreciative of you having me on and um i enjoyed it so thank of you of course you can come back anytime <laughs> come back. all right all right <laughs> thank you